Para po sa ating pag-aaral sa hapong pito, I'll be delivering a sermon prepared by Reverend Clarence Istam, uh, who is the late pastor emeritus ng Canadian Reformed Church doon po sa Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Pero bago po tayo magsimula uh, na ating sermon, samahan niyo po akong muling dumulog sa Panginoon at manalangin. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all scripture to be written for our learning, grant us to hear them, read them, mark them, learn them, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, we bless and thank you for the gift of your word. Grant your servant both the humility and the boldness necessary to preach it. Prepare our hearts and lives to be strengthened and be changed by it. Through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Muli po, magandang hapon sa inyo, mga minamahal kong kapatid sa Panginoon. Good afternoon. Medyo malamig na po. Kanina pa ako nanginginig dun sa likod eh. <laughs> the Ten Commandment, o yung final commandment of the law na binasa natin dun sa Exodus chapter 20 verse 17. Ang sabi po doon, You shall not covet your neighbor's house, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male servant or his female servant or his ox or his donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. Ang pangunahing salita po na mapapansin natin dito sa salita doon ay yung covet. God forbids all covetousness. Pinagbabawal ng Diyos ang lahat ng kasakiman. Ang marahil na tanong ay, has this not already been discussed or touched up or touched upon in the catechism dun sa mga previous uh, preaching na napag-aralan na din natin dun sa Lord's Day 42. If you will remember concerning the Eighth Commandment, dun sa Exodus chapter 20 verse 15, na ang inuutos ay, you shall not steal. Natatandaan niyo pa po yan? At doon, natutunan natin na sinasabi na ipinagbabawal ng Diyos ang lahat ng kasakiman. God forbids all greed. So, ito bang greed is not a matter of coveting the neighbor's house or the neighbor's good. Hindi ba ito parehas lang? Kung babalikan po natin, maging yung seventh commandment, Doon sa Exodus chapter 20 verse 14, inuutos, inuutos po doon na you shall not commit adultery. Sa kautosan pong ito, the wife of the neighbor is also protected against coveting. Kaya nga ang mga katikismo, ang katikismo ay laging nagsasabi sa atin na if you may have something or if you may not, have something, you may not covet it. So, kung ganun po, ito po bang ikasampung utos, bring in a new element. Ang utos ba na ito, tulad ng ipinapaliwanag ng reform tradition ay hindi isang appendix to the law lamang. Oh, a kind of summary ng mga naon ng commandments. Parang 1 to 9, and then sinamarize lang dun sa chapter uh, 10 commandments. Pero makikita natin na ang katikismo ay patungo po sa ganong direksyon. Kapag ipinaliwanag nito ang commandment, tulad dun sa nabasa nating 113 question and answer, na sabi po dun, I shall do nothing contrary to any of God's commandments and hate all sins. Kung ganun po, 
Ito nga ba ang bottom line ng batas ng Diyos? That we are to hate all sins with all our hearts. Well, muli, ang tanong ko po, ang kautosan bang ito brings in a new element or it is a mere repetition? Kasi nabanggit na yan sa commandment 7, commandment 8. Definitely no. It is not a mere repetition. Bagamat marami nang natalakay patungkol sa kautosan ito uh, covering yung topic ng coveting or covetousness. But I would say that here we find a deepening or mas malalim pang uh, kautosan patungkol sa o kabuan ng batas. Here, the law is put forth in its basic depth. When the word covetousness comes into the picture, we are dealing with the inward motivation and agitation or stirring of the heart. At ang ating mga kilos at salita do not just fall out of the blue sky. Gaya ng nabasa natin dun sa Matthew chapter 15 na binasa kanina ni Elder Ronald. Lumalabas, ito ay out of the depth of our hearts. The heart motivates, the mouth formulates, and the hands participates. Kung ang lahat na hindi banal or unholy act are forbidden, nakakatitiyak po tayo ng lahat din ng mga maruruming salita at kaisipan ay contrary to God's law. Then, ito pong commandment goes deep o mas malalim pa via the hands, via the mouth, and via the hearts or through the hearts. Eh, ka nga, hindi na bali kung ano ang itsura mo sa labas. Ang tanong ay, what do you look like on the inside? If the law did not demand this inward imboy, impurity, or sorry, kung ang batas ng Diyos ay hindi din naman itong inward purity o yung malinis na kalooban, it would not be God's law but only a human code or yung tinatawag nating outward conduct. Kung kaya nga po, the Ten Commandment is not an appendix to the law, nor yung afterthoughts lang, but it is the very essential part of the law because the Lord asks for the renewal of the entire person. Kaya masasummarize natin itong ating sermon point as follows. In the Ten Commandments, the Lord demands a holy unity of the thoughts, words, and deeds. Na may dalawang sub-team, no unholy conspiracy, at ang pangalawa po, a holy motivation. Kung matatandaan nyo, even kanina na i-preach ni Pastor Lance, thoughts, yung ating words, and in deeds. And he is pertaining about the Ten Commandments. So, simulan po natin pag-usapan ng ating first point. Noon po sa mga nagdaang pag-aaral natin, at hanggang sa ngayon po, ang batas ng Diyos has dealt with what we might call concrete things. Napag-usapan natin kagaya about stealing, killing, forgery. Yung salitang concrete things na ang ibig sabihin ay mga bagay na maaaring mailagay sa ating mga daliri o sa ating mga kamay. And perhaps even uh, ma-prove o ma-demonstrate from the facts or from the evidence but how do you prove covetousness? Paano mo siya mapuprove? Kasi maaari itong may tago, di po ba? It can be masked o malagyan ng veil yung covetousness. 
Totoo naman po na minsan ang covetousness can sometimes be read from the face o sa mahalata mo sa mukha ng isang tao. Tulad ng nga sinasabi na hindi nga ba yung mga mata natin ay bintana ng ating kaluluwa. Pero it can be also covered up. It can be veiled. Right? Pero kung atin pong uunawain that the verb to covet na ang ibig sabihin sa Hebrew literally says to stretch out one's hand to take. O especially yung pinag-uusapan dito yung stretching out of the hand. Gayun din yung kaparehas na verb uh, na ginamit doon sa Joshua chapter 7 verse 21. Uh, sabi ni Achan, nung nag-confess siya kay Joshua, sabi niya, When I saw among the spoil a beautiful cloak from Shinar and 200 shekels of silver and a bar of gold weighing 50 shekels, then I coveted them. And I took them. Nang ibig sabihin po, I stretched out my hands to took them. Perhaps, ay maaari mong isipin kung paano nga nangyari yun. Si Ikan, he saw material. O nakita niya yung mga material. Look around and see perhaps no witnesses. Then he took the materials. He did it away dun sa kanyang tent. And told no one. And he had his own little secret there. His own little conspiracy. Kung kaya nga yung verb dito na salitang covetousness does not mean so much yung last act of taking, yung pagkuha lang. Hindi lang po yun. Kung lahat ng, kundi ang lahat ng bagay na nauna pa bago pa yung actual na pagkuha, the inward desire, the careful planning, and the conniving to get something or someone. We are concerned here with both the thoughts, deep preparation leading to an attempt, and the attempt itself, even if unsuccessful. Kaya naman, ginamit natin ang salitang conspiracy. Ito yung legal term, which is also known maging sa ating civil law. At dito maaring, uh, maaring ang isang tao makipagsabwatan upang gumawa ng isang bagay. In, uh, in the same sense, sabi rin po sa Bible, yung word na ito na kung saan nag imply ng action ay nagmumula sa isang tao. Ngunit maaring may kinalaman din ng iba, kagaya halimbawa si Ikan. He did it by himself. And maybe, later on, na-involved dito yung kanyang pamilya o yung closest friends or family members niya. Katulad din po si David. He had to involve others to achieve his goal with Bathsheba when he coveted Bathsheba. He had to conspire with the servants of his court, then with Bathsheba herself, and finally with Joab, with the plan to murder yung husband ni Bathsheba. So, there was one great conspiracy and cover-up na nagaganap prior to acting it. At kahit na hindi gawin ng isang tao ang aktwal na gawain ito, the conspiracy, the attempt to do so, is in itself a transgression to the law. Sa atin nga pong batas at even sa mga batas sa ibang bansa, in the law, you can be charged with conspiracy. Tama po? To do a crime or with an attempt at the criminal offense. Perhaps it never come to a final enactment, yung na yon. But already, yung preparation or yung preliminary preparation pa lang ay mali na. Kung ang batas nga ng ating talipunan 
ay sobrang seryoso sa pagdating sa ganitong mga pinagbabawal na uh, kautusan is a big offense. Gaano pa kaya sa batas ito ng ating Panginoon? Dahil ang conspiring o pagsasabwatan ay isang pagsasama-sama ng mga resources o yung my resources and other combined with other resources to get what I want. It begins with my heart, proceeded with my thoughts, and it put outs in words, and finally results in action. Again, kahit na hindi po ito nagresulta ng actual na pagsasakilos o pagsasagawa, o yung actual act nito, the preparation steps are in themselves forbidden by the Lord. Therefore, it is in the constant planning and coveting to do sin that is forbidden here in the Ten Commandments. Kung iisipin po natin, maging po sa ating mga buhay, how much of our life is filled with this kind of covetousness? Kasi may mga ganitong prosesong nangyari po sa ating mga isipan at puso. Filled with this unholy conspiracy na halos misan nga hindi na natin namamalayan. We may perhaps shrink back from many wrong actions, pero hindi dahil ito ay inclined tayo to shrink back. Kadalasan, we shrink back kasi natatakot tayong mahuli. O kaya naman, because we fear yung certain consequences, that's why we shrink back. But given the chance or given the opportunity, kung makakasigurado lang tayo at madalas uh, maisip natin makakalusot o makakatakas tayo, hindi nga ba? Often, we seized the opportunity. O sinasamantala natin yung mga pagkakataon. Tanungin po natin yung ating mga sarili. How many thoughts or desires against the law na hindi natin ginawa? How many thoughts and desires against the law na hindi natin in-execute? Simply because the way was not open or because we thought mauhuli tayo. But the desire in itself, the inclination was present. We are constantly seeing, we are constantly registering, we are constantly acting or thinking, how can I obtain something or how can I achieve a certain goal? And if that process is directed towards lawful things and follows ways which are opened by the Lord, there's nothing wrong with it. Walang masamang desire po doon. Dahil meron namang tinatawag na mga magagandang bagay na Christian desire. Tama po? Halimbawa, a young man or a young woman may desire for a good job. It's not bad. You may desire a loving wife or a loving husband and a good place sa inyong community. It's a good desire. Ngunit gaano kadalas at gaano kadami ang prosesong ito sa ating puso't isipan na kung saan ay hindi directed toward that which is not ours to achieve or that which belongs doon po sa ating kapitbahay. Pero pwede rin, pwede rin naman po natin masabi, eh, the fault lies in the society in which I was living. Dahil our society fosters covetousness. Maaari din masabi natin that we live in a consumptive society. And via advertising, news reporting, lotteries, among many other things, we are urged to get and take. That's why I did it. Naalala ko lang nung 
panahon na ako'y isang aktivista pa, kanina nga nabanggit ni Pastor Lance, yung baligtad na tatsulok na tinatawag. Um, the communists will tell you that our capitalist system is one of greed. And they are right. Tama naman po. Pero ang problema is that they too have not been unable to solve the problem of greed. Kahit baligta rin mo pa ang tatsulok, ganun pa rin. Greedy pa rin ang mamumuno. May kasabihan nga, the grass is always greener on the other side or forbidden fruit is the most desirable. Kung papansinin po natin, people see, people want, and people create needs. People conspire and finally, when a clear opportunity arises, this person will take Always on the lookout, always on the pro, willing or waiting for a suitable opening of his her advantage. Totoo naman po uh, na yung ating pong society ay nagpo-poster ng ganitong mentality. Halimbawa na lang, the whole movie industry, magazine industry, which tinidictate nito yung panlasa natin o yung pangangailangan natin. Tama po ba? Ngayon, hindi na nga magazine or mm, movie, Facebook na lang, or Lazada or uh, Shopee. Isipin nyo yung mga subtle advertisement which has seductive power, which has often na-underestimate po natin. Pero po, ang ating Panginoong Isus, Binigyan tayo ng warning not to look for the cause of coveting in our society or in which is around us. Dahil hindi naman po ganon na whatever comes from the outside defiles a man. Ganon po ba? Hindi po. But what comes up from the inside that defiles a man. Kagaya ng nabasa natin kanina doon sa Matthew chapter 15, verse 19 to 20. Sabi po doon, For out of the heart come, come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile anyone. Sinasabi na kung ano ang lumalabas sa bibig ay nanggagaling sa puso. At ito ang nagpaparumi sa tao. For out of the heart comes, pansinin po natin yung sanabi doon niya, impressive list. Oh. For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander. Ang lipunan natin ay inaabot po tayo upang lamunin tayo o may gulp tayo ng enticement nito. That is true. At kaya naman dapat tayong maging ganap na mulat o aware sa mga tukso na nagmumula sa labas. But the point of this Ten Commandment is that the problem is with ourselves. It is us. It is our heart. It is our sinful nature. It is our reaching out to the things not lawfully ours. The inclination does not come from the outside. Ito ay mula sa ating sarili. In this answer, uh, yung nabanggit natin kanina, gumamit ito ng salitang word na inclination. To incline. To incline means in a certain direction. We confess that we are by nature inclined to do all evil. We are always going that specific direction of evil. And this must change. 
Kailangan pong mabago ito. At sabi ng katekismo that not even the slightest thought or desire contrary to any of God's commandment should ever rise in your heart. Not the slightest and not ever. Nakikita po ba natin yung lalim o yung depth ng dimension na ito? We are not allowed to lean over even one millimeter or not even a fraction of a second toward transgressing any commandments. Pero pwede naman natin sabihin, hindi pa ba sapat to be able to say that with a certain, certain justification? Kagaya halimbawa na, I have never actually worshipped idol naman eh. In fact, I never use God's name in vain. I generally obey my parents. Eh. I never kill anyone. Did we? I never actually committed adultery. I didn't steal. At least not much, no? I never told many lies, although I did sometimes a lot of exaggeration. Pero ang commandment na ito ay nagsasabi, not the slightest, not ever. In the light of this law, we are all utterly condemned. Tama po? Walang isang matuwid sa atin. And we may not shrug our shoulder about this. No? Hindi, na, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin, too bad. But that's how it is. Kung kaya, kung kaya nga po, ang punto dito, sinasabi, God forbids it. All conspiracy in thoughts, in words, or action is an abomination, a source of daily indignation of God to us. And we should not minimize this, thinking that is not so bad. For we are all inclined by nature to do evil. We are all conspirators or conspirators. Tayo ay nilaled ng ating ego. Nagkoconive tayo to expand yung ating teritoryo, to increase yung ating pagiging importante sa kinabibilangan nating lipunan. We are filled of many wrong desires. We quickly envious or we quickly envied. Madalas, mabilis din tayo magalit. We may cover that up with many outward layers ng mga mabubuting gawa natin o yung piety na tinatawag. But the Lord sees what goes on in the depth of our hearts, which is sa ating Panginoon. It's an open book. Doon nga po sa Psalm 64, ito yung Psalm ni David na siya mismo nakakalam kung anong ibig sabihin ng to be conspired against. Dahil nung si Saul and later on yung kanyang anak na si Absalom, conspired against him. At ang panalangin ni David, sabi niya, from secret plots and scheming, hide me. Men who think who sees us. At dito, alam ni David na God knows the thoughts of those who tried us and stand beside us. At totoo na ang ating Panginoon will protect us from the, conspira uh, from the conspiracy ng mga ibang tao. But at the same time, dito po si David ay nanalangin din maging dun sa Psalm 32. How many, oh, sabi po doon, how happy he whose heart contrite and lowly confess to thee his sins. O God most holy, his spirit free from wickedness and guile. David was conspired against, but how many of those conspiracies were judgments of God upon his own conspiracy? Kagaya nung kaninang nabangking ko about Uriah and Bathsheba. 
Kaya, kailangan niya sabihin at manalangin din. At sinabi niya, save me, O Lord, from the covetousness from my neighbor. But at the same time, and above all, save me from my own covetousness. Oh, covetousness. Ten commandment. Everyone is covetous. Yeah? Pero meron lamang isang exempted or exemption. Ito ay ang ating Panginoong Isus. Not once did the slightest thought or desire ever rise sa puso ng ating Panginoon against God's commandment. Not the slightest, not ever, ito ay perhaps sa maraming tao ay mahirap isipin in our vantage point. But it is true. Dahil ito yung nag-iisang pag-asa natin. Our sure faith, our only joy. Here, ang ang spirito which is indeed completely free from all wickedness and guile. Ang ating Panginoong Jesus conspired against no one. Jesus spoke openly and publicly in the synagogue and temple. Jesus took nothing that was not his. Instead, Jesus gave all that he had. And they conspired against him in spite of. They took counsel together in their heart in secret meetings, under cloak and dagger. And finally, they went out to arrest him under cover of darkness. This was the great conspiracy against the only man without guile and without wickedness. And he has poured out his spirit so that we shall no more conspire to evil but shall instead be inspired to holiness and newness of life, that we should be renewed from the heart and instead of unholy conspiracies, have a holy motivation. That leads us to our second point, a holy motivation. To counter po yung uh, unholy conspiracy, we contrast by the holy motivation. At pagkakaroon ng holy motivation o ang pagkakaroon ng uh, banal na motivasyon ay nangangalugan na hindi na tayo pinangunuhan o led by the evil that dictates our own hearts but by the word and the will of God. By the renewing power ng banal na Espiritu so that we may have a holy zeal to do God's will in all things na prescribe po ng kanyang batas. Gaya ng sinabi po dun sa Catechism, question 113. Doon sa second praise, sabi po dun, Rather, with all my hearts, I shall always hate sin and take pleasure in whatever is right. We must always hate all sin and delight in all righteousness. Nakikita po ba natin kung gaano ito kalawak? Yung phrase na binasa natin. We must have one goal in life. To do the only will of God na kung saan siyang nag sa atin sa pamamagitan ng ating Panginoong Isus. We must hate all sins. Hindi lamang po ilang mga kasalanan na maaari nating ituring na karumal-dumal, no? But all sins are forbidden in the law. Kasi we tend to be selective also in respect to sin. Tama po? We tend to make yung habit of some sins while fight other sins. Um, we consider some sins worse than the others. Like to commit murder, we feel it's so terrible. But yung gossip, it's not so bad at all. Yeah, 
But the Lord, sabi niya, hate all sins. Tama po? There is no exemption. There is no little, there is no big, there is no uh, worse, there is not minimum. Pero hindi naman po ito ng alga na tayo ay maging grudgingly, refrain, or umiwas na lamang sa kasalanan dahil sa posibleng consequence, kaya ka umiwas. But, on the other hand, we delight in all righteousness, kaya natin nire-refrain ang kasalanan, that we really and truly love the law of God, that we really find joy in life, or in obedience and to really find purpose and fulfill in a life of holiness. To hate all sin, ang ibig sabihin po nun, that we don't stretch out our hands to take what is not ours. Ngunit sa halip, reach out to do that which is good, lawful, edifying, at maging helpful. At ang ibig sabihin pa ay that we don't conspire to do evil, but instead motivate each other to do good in the service of the Lord. We don't lead one another astray in evil ventures, but keep one another close on the way of truth and obedience at Kinakailangan, hating all sins means having a holy unity of our thoughts, of our words, of our action. Ang ibig sabihin po nito that the change must go deep to the heart. Ang pa, panganib lamang po dito is that we apply the law only to the surface. That our changing skin deep lang siya, like makeup, na kung saan nagko-cover up ng mga blemishes. Pero ang ating Panginoon sa Kristo accused the Pharisees of lip service. Sinabi niya dun sa Matthew 15 verse 8 to 9. These people honors me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. Ngunit ano po ang sinasabi ng commandment? No lip service, but heart service. The commandment requires that the heart be filled with holy zeal, that the mouth speak words of truth and righteousness, and that the hands reach out in love to do good before God unto man. Kung kaya itong commandment ay nagsasabi of nothing else than yung transformation po ng ating puso at i-curve yung ating inclination sa ating mga flesh. That is what requires dito sa commandment na ito. That is how we begin to fulfill all the commandments of God. Ang Ten Commandments are not to be applied like a thin layer of makeup over our lives so that they look good dun lang po sa panlabas while ang ating panloob ay nabubulok na. Dahil kung gayon, uh, katulad lang po tayo ng isang magandang tomb o yung nicho sa simenteryo, nearly whitewashed outside but full of dead inside. Noong November 1, nagpunta ako sa uh, Norte. Um, pagandahan sila ng mga nicho, uh, mapuputi, malilinis. Pero alam natin, sa loob nun ay panay mga buto o dirty bones. Ngunit, ang layunin po ng commandment na ito is that outward obedience reflects an inward renewal. Ulitin ko po, outward obedience reflects the inward renewal. Ang ating mga kamay must be guided by the heart in full obedience to God's law, always. 
Ang sabi po ng katekismo, wala kahit isang maliit na sandali na maaari nating pabayaan dito. The transformation must be complete, full, totally, and constant. The holy unity ng ating mga kamay, ng ating mga bibig, at ang ating mga puso must never be broken. There must always be a holy motivation that which drive us. This is what the Lord requires. Anything short of this falls short doon sa perfect requirements in the law of God. Dahil yun ang nire-require ng batas ng Diyos. Then, kapag na-realize natin, yun ang nare-require ng Diyos, we cannot do this on our own. Right? We will fail miserably. Every day, again and again, we will fail. Pero, to grow positively in this direction, kailangan natin ang patuloy na tulong ng Spirito ng Diyos at ng patnubay ng salita ng Diyos, the Word of God. But the point is dealt. Next question and answer. Doon sa catechism question answer 114 and 115 na unfortunately hindi natin matatalaki ngayon. Lord willing, next year, Lord's Day 44, masagot natin yung question 14, 114 and 115. Kasi itong 113 question and answer pa lang na topic ay medyo mahaba na and it should be uh, dealt uh, primarily na kung saan uh, makikita natin importante. Kung kaya nga, mga kapatid ko dito sa ZRC, sa ZCRC, ang point o ang pinupunto In this sermon, that the Lord Jesus Christ demands a holy unity of our thoughts, the words, and action, there may be no unholy conspiracies, but always a holy motivation by the Word and Spirit of God. There must be no covetousness, but righteousness. The point is now that God will not settle for anything less. Kung ang Panginoon, He asks of His only begotten Son, God asks this also to us. And we are not to reckon, or we are to reckon seriously, or we have to consider seriously with this commandment. Sapagkat ito ang kalaliman ng batas ng Diyos. Kagaya nga nung sumulat si Apostol Pablo sa mga taga-epeso, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 5, sabi doon, For you may be sure of this, that everyone who is sexually immoral or impure, or whoever is covetous, that is, an idolater, has no inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Covetousness dito is linked to with idolatry, sabi ni Paul. Dahil ito ay karaniwang isang anyo ng idolatry, ang covetousness. Kung kaya ang covetousness is a worship of things of this world. Covetousness is making a God out of earthly possession and relationship and doing everything to serve such God. So, in the Ten Commandments, covetousness, we go back to the first commandment, idolatry. Natatandaan niyo pa po ba ang first commandment? You shall not make any other gods except me. Worship me. Thank you. So we actually come for silka. Sa law of God, a covetous person is an idolater because his heart is is directed toward created things and not to the creator of all things. Our Lord Jesus Christ did not covet because his heart was directed fully towards his God. 
he kept the first commandment and he kept up to the last commandment, serving only God. He coveted nothing. He had one desire to do the full will of God. The Lord our God expect nothing and less from you and me as well. He wants a heart steadfast in his service. Amen. Muli sama niyo po kung manalangin sa ating Panginoon as we close. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth that our Lord Jesus Christ did not covet because his heart was directed fully towards you. Tinupad niya ang lahat ng mga commandments, serving you, only God. He coveted nothing. He had one desire, that is to do your will. Thank you, O oh God, for showing us how you and our salvation were accomplished through your word. The demand for a holy unity of our thoughts, our words and action, and a holy motivation by your word and spirit, that there must be no covetousness in us, but righteousness. Because you have asked for perfection of your only begotten Son, and so we must also recognize and believe the seriousness of your commandments. Help us to delight in desiring your truth, O Lord, with all our hearts. And be conformed in the likeness of our Lord Jesus Christ. And to live a life of righteousness with a heart directed towards only you, our God and Redeemer. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.